Dumb white Americans watch foreign movies. We have visited the realms of India. We did Hong Kong. So we are going to be going to the magical kingdom of Sweden. Is Sweden a kingdom? I don't. I don't actually know if that's true yes. or not. Yes, it is. Okay, good. There is a king and or a queen out there. Yes, there is. There is more European royalty still left around than you believe. Is Abba in any way involved in the uh, royal family? It seems like they should be. <laughs> They're probably the spokesman or something. I mean, it's like me and Rob have our suspicions that John Clyde Van Damme is actually the prime minister of Belgium because he's so popular <laughs> there. So I was thinking that maybe it'd be the same thing. They're considered with, uh, national treasures. I would hope so, at the very least. Not so much... Uh, Ace of base. Yeah, Ace of base, yeah. <laughs> they were ran out of the country, hopefully. So uh, we're doing... Girl with Dragon Tattoo, and I figured we'd real quick just say what our past experiences are with all things Stieg Larsson. Well, I'd never heard of him until the books came out. Everyone ran around screaming what a great series it is, how amazing it is. So I read the book, expecting it to be life-changing, and, you know, it's a good, it's a fun murder mystery. I figured it out before the end, but that's usually a good sign. But I didn't think it was so, um, I didn't see what the, everyone was going on about being so incredible. But then usually whenever something popular pops around, it's not, it's, it's not as good as my expectations. It's just like um, Fifty Shades of Grey. Ow. Oh, jeez. Did you expect that to be good? Well, I, I figured, look, everyone ran around talking about how great it was and it was amazing. And everyone was reading it. So I said <laughs> there has to be something to it. And there wasn't. No. So other than reading the novels, have you seen any of the movies at all? In preparation for this, I watched both movies back to back. Meaning American and Swedish version? Yes. That's good. That's good. Because I have some things to say in contrast and comparison. Andrew, what about you? Well, without Rob here, we can have an adult conversation without any sniping. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You'll pick on some little thing and then flip out of it. I remember... (laughs) We would watch Excalibur, and, you know, this is a movie filled with, like, dragon and uh, magic and all this stuff, and all you can talk about is the armor wasn't realistic. Yeah. (laughs) You got this guy, Merlin, casting a spell on this guy riding across the air in a horse, and you don't blink an eye. But then you say, well, the joints in the arm fits there. It wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't hold up properly like that. That is an issue. It's why I kind of like him and Andrew to watch movies separately when we're watching things in preparation because they're going to egg each other on and, like, amplify each other's <laughs> shit. You have, what, not read the books but watched the movies? Yeah, when everyone was talking about it years ago, I found the original trilogy and fell in love with it. For this time, I didn't realize my DVD actually had a uh, English dub, so I watched that for the first time. And some of the worst subtitles I've ever seen, because I had the English subtitles under the English dub. And for such a popular thing, every single thing that popped up was a mistake. But it had nothing to do with the movie itself. The movie itself I love. I've also seen the Daniel Craig one when it was new. I watched it once and that was it. And there is a uh, later one that I know you haven't seen because I actually told you about it. I didn't know it existed until about a month ago when I was going through these movies again. They made one in 2018 that also, like the American, the American one was kind of a hybrid of, you know, and they set it in Sweden. They were rocking Swedish accents to the best of their acting abilities. This one was also kind of, it seemed like a hybrid American-Swedish thing. And it was glitzy, glammy. They had a budget behind it. They had a whole new actor and actress in the leads. And I couldn't get through more than half an hour of it just because it was so blown out of fucking proportion from what the originals were that it was just silly. There's a 2018 version of... of what, I, I assume it's one of his further books. I assume Larson wrote He's more dead. than three. He died, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he wrote the first three and then died. Someone else is writing the rest of them. Okay. I don't know. It was just weird. It was, it was like everything that I didn't like about going to the American version times two. You know, it's like that. It was like the Police Academy version of the Americanized one. Uh, I thought the American version was better. Well, that's something that, yeah, I definitely will uh, mention because I I think just from in the last two hours, I think I might have come around a little bit more on that. But I originally, you know, books were real popular and I like when that happens. 
And, you know, when somebody comes out of a country that doesn't normally filter over to the United States and does something good like that, you hear about it. I read the books, loved the books, was excited to find out that they were, I think the movies already existed when I found the books. So I dove into those, watched them. Normally, back then, and probably even into today, I'm not a big fan of subtitle movies, but there are some movies that, fuck that dub shit. Some movies, you gotta pay the price. You gotta, gotta do the subtitles. I do want to still see the nine-hour miniseries television version. I need to look that up, because you mentioned that a few times, and I... Apparently, there's more, more story, more. I don't see what more they could do. The books are pretty much well covered in both those movies. Yeah, they just drag on with a lot more like, Swedish snowscapes for hours on <laughs> I end. I guess when the American version came out, I groaned because that's what happens when you take something that I love and it comes out. And up until I'll say today, I went back today and watched the American version because I had a few hours to kill and knew we were coming on to record this. And I actually take back a lot of my pre-existing thoughts and feelings about that movie. I actually thought they pulled it off and it did real well. We can talk about that later. I was enthused when I mentioned this as a possible porn movie to do, and Andrew already had the box set, so that was cool. Rob, being a fucking uncultured goddamn savage, knew nothing about it. <laughs> and Rex, it was cool that you also had been in on it. So that worked out well. Do we want to talk about the comparison? I think that's an important thing to do. So I'm watching it today and, you know, like regular shit's happening, just regular plot stuff's happening. And you're watching the Swedish version and, you know, it's a little slow in the beginning. In this one, there's like this, they got this like Hollywooded up background kind of thrumming bass under the just boring shit happening. Oh, totally. Uh, David Fincher went in there and he's like, just stylistically, it keeps you going. Yeah, the starting, the opening credits where it's all like black leather and like S&M, you know, just, just close up, like that rock music playing or whatever the hell kind of like EDM. I like Daniel Craig. He's in better shape, better looking than the guy that played in the, in the trilogy. I like Daniel Craig in that role. Plus, he was kind of playing a pussy. The guy's not a pussy, but when stacked up against Elizabeth Salander... She saves him at the end. He gets shot at, and he's all crying in the fucking bathtub. You know, and, and Daniel Craig, we all know him as James Bond, where he's just the yeah. ultimate fucking badass. So seeing him actually acting, playing a different role, not just playing Daniel Craig or James Bond, that was cool. Well, I know when they made the original version, the, the reason they chose the actor they did was the director said he wanted someone that women would feel safe in his arms, like a big teddy bear type guy that was sensitive and liked women no matter what type of woman they were, they would just accept. I've seen him in a few other things, and he's usually playing a bad guy. I think he was in, like, one of the John Wicks, maybe. Yeah, he was in the first John Wick. Playing, like, a bad guy mafia dude. And every time I see him, I'm like, ah, it's Mikhail, it's a Blomquist. He was in a Mission Impossible movie, too. And he's never went back to playing that <laughs> soft teddy bear role again. Well, he died, so that's why he's not playing anything. The author and the actor? Yeah, the actor died in 2017 at 56 from uh, lung cancer. Oh, see, this is Andrew's magical skill. He knows when every celebrity dies. <laughs> My biggest complaint was I liked Numi Rapace so damn much that in my head she is solidified as Lizbeth Sounder. So when Rooney Mara comes in, who is, I think, much, much hotter when you see them like on the red carpet or in other things, but she came in looking like such a fucking freak with the I don't think they were shaved eyebrows, but they were like bleached blonde and the Dutch boy bangs. And But she was more like the actual character, I think, because the character is supposed to be a little off-putting, isn't she? She's autistic. The character is a mentat from Dune, right? <laughs> the way she functions, it's, a, it's straight out of Dune. It's a little bit of a trope where you have like Monk or Numbers or uh, Psych. All, all those shows that all came out at the same time where you got to be in order to be a super, super detective, you have to have some kind of like social anxiety disorder or autism or, you know. I don't know. A lot of that stuff did come out at the exact same time. And the interesting thing is the American version is more brutal, more obvious than the Swedish with her. Her backstory is more graphically shown in the Swedish version because you see her set her father on fire, right? Yeah. I think it was to make her look more like a victim so you would identify with her more, so you'd care more about her. 
they did that on another market occasion. A part of the American movie that I noticed, the uh, motorcycle exciting chase at the end, guy goes off the road. In the Swedish version, she makes the choice to let the motherfucker die. She basically kills him. Well, she doesn't save him. That's a different. Well, and it comes up later where Michael asks her, you know, did you? Yeah. And she's like, yeah. She basically is like, yeah, I let the fucker die. In the American version, she has gun in hand and is walking toward the car. And then, boom, big explosion. She never got the chance to make that decision. So they intentionally wrote around that. I don't know why. I think that took away some of her badassness. Yeah, it makes her a more interesting character. Like, she's in a dark place, you know? Not like she hadn't done terrible things before. I mean, especially when she tattoos the guy. That's great. I love that. She got perfect revenge on that asshole. She should not have gotten raped in the movie. Like, she should have got her revenge before he did anything to her. I don't know which one's worse. Probably the American one was a bit more brutal. Really? Because I, I was, like, really feeling kind of sick watching it today, watching the, uh, the original again. I was uncomfortable with both of them. And, you know, it really, well, of course, it really does put you on her side. Yeah, well, yeah. The uh, interesting thing about there not being sequels for the American version and kind of on that topic of the rape scene is that's not just like an isolated incident that goes away. That parole officer is in the second movie and is in yeah. the third movie. And the girl who kicked the hornet's nest, she's sitting in court and they're playing that video that she made as an explanation for why she did what she did and why, she, you know, so, the, and you know, there's all the people in the audience that are watching and they're just like in tears and like shocked and horrified. It's cool how it was not just little isolated scene. It keeps coming back and back and back. That's why I think the American version being by itself kind of loses out quite a bit. What about the Numi Rapace versus Rooney Mara? They both have weird fucking names. Too many O's. There's too many O's. I think Newbie's just adorable, so I like her more. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the character is incredibly off-putting. I thought both of them were repulsive in a practical way. In just a generally unfeminine kind of way, like would not bang? Oh, totally not. Okay. <laughs> or maybe a one-night stand. I'd be worried about the panties come off and what kind of piercings are down there that are going to shred my junk, you know? With how hairy her armpits are, just imagine what her bush looks like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, God. And, you know, there's the old saying, never stick your dick in crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the way she's written, the way she's set up, it's kind of like some sort of middle-aged man's fantasy girl. I've seen a lot of people, I looked it up earlier, because I was like, who doesn't love this? This is like everything that the, the modern, like, kind of woke things would want they should watch this as an example of how to do a great character and then but i was surprised to find that that's the exact mindset that you're pointing out like that they don't like the show at all because it's it's like a man's fantasy an older man's fantasy oh, don't forget it's in the book she only goes for older men too oh does she i think the secret to why a lot of people give it shit is a lot of like the lgbtq start watching and like yeah right on she's lesbian and then she starts going for the the dick and they're just like, no, betrayal. At the end of the movie, when she needs to disguise herself as a normal person in order to get into the Cayman Islands bank, so she, like, you know, does, like, the blonde wig, takes all the piercings, she starts looking more like the actress, Rooney Mara, and I'm looking at her at the end of it, and I'm like, wow, she's gotten significantly hotter since uh, the beginning of this movie. I, I guess all she needed was just some deep digging. Can I just tell people all you needed was some serious deep digging? Apparently that makes creepy lesbians a lot hotter is just getting the dick. Right. All her problems were solved by a man's penis. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's the moral. That's the takeaway. When Rooney Mara got the uh, role for that, she was an unknown actress. She's Kate Mara's little sister. Yeah. People probably know who Kate Mara is. And she prepared for it. I did a video like early in the days of this channel about crazy actors and the weird preparation they do before roles. And, you know, there's there's some kooky bastards out there that really take shit too seriously, like Daniel Day-Lewis, you know. Yeah. But she lived in Sweden for like six months in order to get the accent down. She learned martial arts because she got into like two fights in the movie that lasted maybe a grand total of about 60 seconds. Did she get anal sex? I don't <laughs> know about that, but she got her nipples pierced which is weird because her nipples are not pierced in the movie. 
she learned to ride a motorcycle, uh, learned how to handle a gun. She like did all this fucking preparation. And it did pay off because she was up for an Oscar for this role. Rex, you mentioned liking the D. Craig version better than the Swedish version. Elaborate. Well, first of all, I thought shot for shot, it traveled better. It was much more interesting to look at. I felt the Swedish version had that blue filter going on over it. And I can't stand that style. I thought that's just how Sweden looked. All that does is make the film a lot less interesting to look at. The American version, they ramped it up. They made it go faster. Things were more brutal, more obvious. And for some reason, Daniel Craig's character, he was a better investigator than the Swedish version. There was that photograph of the girl in the room from back in the 60s when the girl disappeared. And that's handed to the Bloomquest in the Swedish version, but Daniel Craig discovered it himself in the American one. His motivation is different, too, in both of them. In the Swedish version, don't forget, he knew that girl. She was his babysitter. That's what I was going to mention. The American version. Is that taken out of the American version? Yeah, it's not a part of the story at all where he had some childhood connection. I think it was like he lived there for a few years as a kid. So he was babysat by the blonde. And there was the whole him making a assumption based on a memory he had where it wasn't actually Harriet, the dead girl, supposedly dead girl. It was actually Harriet's friend, the other Yeah, the cousin. Was, the cousin. Yeah, yeah there, there was this whole, like, mix-up, and it was all mistaken assumption by Blomquist. That didn't happen at all in America. That sort of changes the motivation of the Blomquist character. So the American one, he's going for pure revenge, right? The only reason he's doing this is so he'll get that file from, from Christopher Plummer's character, and he can get the revenge of the people who screwed him over. You know, that's not in the uh, Swedish version because that's like a little surprise at the end where uh, Elspeth just like hands him all the info that he needs, like as like a payback. Well, I think I think it was his his it's what got him to go out into the middle of nowhere and live in that cabin for in, in the Swedish version. It's clear it's months on end, this investigation, whereas in the American version, I'd, I'd look back and guess maybe like two weeks. That's what sure what it seemed like. Yeah, because in the Swedish version, they say he has six months and they'll give him lots of money and stuff. So basically he could pay for a good lawyer or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he doesn't have Lisbeth even show up until, you know, like three, four months into his long, cold winter in the cabin. In fact, in the Swedish version, he had time to kill because in six months he had to serve his jail time. Whereas in the American version, no mention of jail time. He mentioned that he had been hit for libel and was out on his luck and his Robin Wright pen fired him from Millennial Magazine. But he didn't have a prison sentence upcoming in, in that American version. Well, as Rex said, like there were tweaks made to make it faster. and Definitely, definitely. I was hesitant before I mentioned it to you, Andrew, and you said you'd already seen it. I was hesitant to recommend watching it because I just got done watching it. This was about a month ago. And I'm trying to picture Rob sitting through the first hour, which is kind of slow. You know, they're connecting things and they're doing important stuff. It's, you know, like a mystery. He's, you know, like they're, they're building the blocks of the story. But it was also kind of slow. Yeah. For me, it's uh, I, I see something new every time I watch it. I've watched it a couple of times now. And I, every time I watch it, I, I understand a little bit more what's going on and I pick out the things that they hint at early on. And I love stories like that a lot more than like an Agatha Christie type of mystery where they just say, well, it was this guy all along. And Yeah, it's like Rex said. I mean, he figured it out before the end of it, but that's how kind of good mysteries are is, is it's a bullshit mystery if the reader doesn't have everything they need to solve. Ideally, it's tricky hard and not everybody's going to get it, but the author needs to have all the, you know, everything in there. And who would have expected that the, uh, the Nazis would have been the bad guys? Yeah. <laughs> that was a real brave stance for them to take in that movie. Oh, the Nazis are the bad guys. <laughs> Speaking of really good villains, here's another point about the movies. Why I think I'm coming around on the Americanized version is normally I see a movie and it's a murder mystery and Stellan Skarsgård shows up as this innocuous, trying to be helpful, friendly guy. And I'm like, oh, it's him. It's him. I've seen Ronan. I, I know exactly. It's going to be him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in this movie, before you meet Stone Skarsgård, you meet friggin' Georg Von Trapp, and you meet yeah. uh, friggin' Julian Sands. They have him in there, you know. Uh, it, he was the son of a Nazi, right? Yeah, and they had the bad guy from Lethal Weapon 2 who's like diplomatic immunity. 
just said that yesterday. <laughs> they had all these mofos like vying for who the bad guy is, and it's like sparking in my head, like, oh, it's him. No, it's him. No, it's him. It's it's warlock. It's Julian Sands. He's a warlock. And then Stellan Skarsgård comes in. It's a way to have that kind of awesome star power, yet still kind of leave it very much up in the air as to who the bad guy is, right? The uh, thing that I liked very much about the first movie is when you watch them in succession, I don't actually like the first one best of all because it laid the groundwork for the awesomeness that, that happened in the second one. Yeah. Elizabeth had a plan. She got that money at the end of the first movie and then used that to like start taking revenge and getting like yeah. getting back at people. <laughs> so they had all this shit laid out. The author had like a plan. The first book wasn't a contained story. It was setting the groundwork for what he was going to you know write about in his next novels. So the American version definitely suffers from not having any of those sequels. She just mentioned briefly that she burned her father when she was 12, and that's why she's a uh, ward of the state. That's all they do in the American version. The Swedish version, you get the little kid throwing the matches in the car and daddy burning, and that's awesome. <laughs> it's an origin story, and origin stories are usually not as good as the next one. Yeah, yeah. Nobody watching the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo Swedish version, watching that cold, not knowing anything about it, nobody would think it was an original story. They would think it was a good, self-contained murder mystery. And only in retrospect, after watching Ep 2 and Ep 3, are you like, oh, look what she's up to. I kind of wish they would have kept going with the American version, as long as they're going to throw a ton of money at it and everything. You know, I'm on board. They didn't make enough money to justify it. I, that must have shocked some people, right? It was such a big hit. And it's not like, like five, ten years passed. I mean, the uh, it, it was like two years. Two years after the uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Did he have to go back and do James Bond or something? Was he unavailable? That probably was part of it, unfortunately. Those last two Bond movies sucked. All right. I need to get like a summation of this. So I'm going to ask you all a few questions. Would you rather bang... Swedish Lisbeth Salander or American Lisbeth Salander? Uh, Swedish. Swedish. I will make note of the fact that Swedish one definitely had hairy armpits and that the American version may not have. I didn't see her armpits. You know, I don't stare at a girl's armpits when I'm having sex with them. I know, I know, I know. I, know, I, know. I, I was just throwing <laughs> that out there. Just throwing it there. My answer is the same as yours also. I, I'd also throw a little new mirror pace action. What about the actresses themselves in real life? What if you were on a date with New Mirror Pace and you're all kind of like starstruck, but then you remember that she was in that in Prometheus movie where she was trying to outrun <laughs> a goddamn donut spaceship and didn't make a right or left turn? Wouldn't that like be a total turnoff? Did she write it? Because that's more of a writing issue. No, that was David Lindelof. All right, well then, how is that her fault? Okay, okay, that's cool, that's cool. What about, um... Oh, I just looked up Rooney Mara, because I've only seen her in The Girl and the Dragon Tattoo. That was my question. Do you know what Rooney Mara looks like? Yeah, she's cute. Oh, she's a very attractive girl. I'm an equal opportunity pig. I would take either one. <laughs> All right. Now, here's the ultimate question. If you had to, Daniel Craig or other guy? Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig, by a mile. <laughs> if you have to, yeah, right? <laughs> Exactly. The other guy's ugly, man. At least this one, he can say, hey, I, you know, Daniel Craig. <laughs> James Bond. I wouldn't even have a gun to my head. I'd put that shit on my channel and be like, James Bond, motherfucker.